Hi, this is Janet Wakelin with RemarkablyCreated.com here with another One Take Wonder video. Today we're going to look at My Digital Studio and specifically we are going to look at using non-Stampin' Up! products with My Digital Studio. I will warn you, however, it may create an intense need for My Digital Studio if you have yet made the 1995 investment. When you see how easy it is to manipulate the images that are not Stampin' Up!, how um, intuitive the program is, I think that you will be simply amazed and it will totally expand your digital world as well as your traditional crafting world. So let's go ahead and let's get started. The very first thing is obviously you have some non-Stampin' Up! images, whether they are PNG, .png, .jpg, or .svg extension files, make sure that you have them in a folder where you can find them. And so I have mine here as non-SU Digi. I do have some PNG files, I do have some papers, and I have loaded some SVG files so that you can see them. And you can either drag and drop or you can copy and paste the images that you want to move. And then what you want to do is you want to go to your computer, you want to go to your C drive, let's click on that, you're going to go to program files, and you're going to look for my digital studio. We're going to open that up and specifically the components. Now, if you have background papers, you're going to want to put them in backgrounds. If you've purchased embellish embellishments, ribbons, twine, buttons, or any of that, file them in embellishments. If it's an SVG file that's a punch, you're going to want to put it under punches. And if it's a stamp, you're going to want to put it here in stamps. And let's give you an example. You can right click and you're going to put new folder. And then you'll give the folder a name. Okay. For me, I labeled mine simply Rona so that I know where it's at. You can do the same thing under punches. Here you can see the word dog and those are two SVG dog bone files that I have, some dog punches. You'll notice a decidedly um, similar theme, theme here, all dog products. And under backgrounds, I created a folder under designer paper that says dog prints. Once you create your folder again, you can either just drag and drop them into the folder or you can right click and paste the images in here. When you create your folder and you go to drag and drop or you go to right click and paste, it will say that you need permission as the administrator to do so. You own My Digital Studio and you have loaded it on your computer so you are the administrator and you do have permission to do that. So now let's go ahead and let's look in My Digital Studio to see just how intuitive the program is and how it works with non Stampin' Up! products. On the screen in front of you, you will see a book that I created using Rona's True Type Images. Everything here on the front are PNG files from Rona, and I was able to color them and do some fun things with them. And then she has these really fun True Type fonts that I use as an app on my phone with Instagram, and also now here in my digital studio. And they're actually kind of what you call dingbats, where each letter of the alphabet recognizes an image. And so instead of hunting and pecking all the time or trying to remember what letter was what letter, which would never happen in my life, I created this handy little swatch book tutorial for me to keep by my computer when I am crafting and creating or in my purse for when I'm on long road trips and I'm using um, the app and stuff like that for photos. And I did do a tutorial on swatch books for you. But let's go ahead and let's insert a page here. And we're just going to add a blank page, and it gives me a blank page. And I want you to notice right now that the Design Center is closed. It has all of the possibilities in the Design Center listed right here on the right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the bleed area off because I just want a work surface for us. I'm going to come over here to the little stamp image. I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to grab one of these images, and I'm going to drag it to my work surface. And you will notice magically the Stamp Design Center opened. I love that my digital studio recognizes what type of image I have brought to the work surface and I'm not going to frustrate the heck out of myself trying to alter or do something to an image that is not possible. So it's opened up all of the possibilities for me of this image over here on the right in the design center. So it has recognized it as a stamp which means that I can go ahead and I can add a drop shadow to it and I can add a drop shadow in all of our yummy colors so let's just go ahead and give it a orange drop shadow for fun and you'll see just a little light orange hue behind it. I can go ahead and I can crop out just part of the image which is great. Sometimes you don't want a whole part of that um, 
stamp so you can crop out part of it. I can go ahead and I can change the entire color of the entire image at one time. I can match the color. So maybe I have some beautiful designer series paper here on the background, background papers that I want to match. Maybe there's a color in a photo I want to match and I would simply bring that photo to my work surface. I would hit the color match tool. And then again, let's just find this really soft color from the, uh, what do we call it? The drop shadow that we added here. And now you can see that I've kind of given this really cool frosty look to the entire image. The other thing that I can do is I can use our coloring tool. And our coloring tool allows us, let's make this bigger so that you can see it. Our coloring tool allows us to very specifically color. So it's like using markers on stamps so we can go right in and use very specific colors. And let's get some green. Let's be a little traditional here. So you can see where I'm able to go in and I'm able to color. And of course, I'm coloring outside the lines just as if I was still in kindergarten. So just but just a real quick rough look for you so you can see where you can use your coloring tool. You can mirror the image, which flips it side to side. You can flip it, which is top to bottom. I can rotate it. I can also custom rotate it by dialing in the number here that I want it to be. And let's just do 14 degrees. I can also change the opacity creating background or softer versions of it just like that. So that's a stamp image and that's PNG. Let's go ahead and let's look at our punches. And remember I said that I had imported an SVG file that was a dog bone. And look over here, magically the punch design center has opened up, which I love. Our punches, you can mat our punches and you can change the width of that mat. You can also change the color of that mat. And let's just do a hideous purple for just a second. Actually, it's not really hideous, but for a dog bone, it's kind of a funny color. You can also drop shadow just like we did before, changing how much how blurry it is, the opacity of it, and again, changing the color of it. I can also crop part of the punch out if I want to. I can mirror it, which you're not going to see because it's kind of the same side to side. I can flip it. I can rotate it. I can do all of that kind of fun stuff. I can fill it with one solid color. Okay, I can go ahead and I can color match again to something else that is on the screen. And let's just pick, let's just go with this light pink here so I can color match it with something else that's on my work surface. I can also fill it with paper. So if I want to go ahead and I just have this one open for whatever crazy reason, I can fill it with paper. And when it's filled with paper, again, I can continue to work with all of the punch properties, which includes altering the size of the print of that paper. So that's another possibility. I can go ahead and I can photo fill it. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can find a photo here real quick. My pictures. Oops, wrong one. I'm so sorry about that. Remarkable. My documents. My pictures. And let's go to photos. Nothing like watching somebody else's folder. So I'm finding out how much stuff somebody else happens to have on their folder. Let's just pick those two pictures of my boy since it is a dog picture. And I can click on it. And now I can... Go ahead and I can adjust that photo. I'll make it a little bit bigger. So there's a picture of my two boys. And let's just go ahead and rotate that image. So there you go. I filled it with a photo. I can also, again, change the opacity just like that. So lots of possibilities with your SVG files. And again, the Design Center recognizes it. Now let's go over here to our paper. And let's browse. And we're going to go up here to Designer Papers. And you can see my dog prints. These are new prints that I had just went ahead and loaded. Now with your paper, you can just simply drag and fill the entire background just like that. The other option that you have is to add your paper as a layer. And let's just pick, let's just find a different paper to, well, we'll just work with these little hearts. One of them has little bones and things on it. But you can add it as a layer. And when it does that, it usually adds it as a four um, or three by three square, excuse me. And you can see that here on the surface. And then I can go ahead and work with it as a photo. You can see that the photo box is what's open, so I can go ahead and I can mat this. And let's just change the color of the mat. White on white is not going to show up very well for you. Let's just make it blue. And again, I can change the width of that mat, so I can go ahead and work with it as a, as a photo when I add it as a page layer. Can drop shadow like you've seen before. I can crop, so maybe I just want one single heart for whatever reason. So I can crop. Okay, which is great. Sometimes papers have a specific design element, not an all over print like that. And so sometimes that you do want to go ahead and pull a specific image out of that. Um, let's see, I can zoom in. You can zoom out 
And so this is kind of fun. This makes your print a little smaller or a little bigger. So it's a great way to alter the size of your print when you zoom in and out. So I've gone ahead and I've added it as um, a page layer and it's recognized as a photo. So that's a great way to work with your paper. So you can see how easy it is to work with non Stampin' Up! product right within my digital studio. And you can see how intuitive my digital studio is. So I hope you have fun marriaging your non Stampin' Up! product with my digital studio. I love being a demonstrator and I'm well aware that there are other craft projects out there. But one of the things that I love about Stampin' Up! is just how much it highlights other products out there and I truly believe that Stampin' Up! makes everything else look better. I guess I'm just a little bit biased plus I get to save um, on the products that I purchase for myself. It's a great company. So have fun again marriaging your non Stampin' Up! product with my digital studio and I look forward to seeing your digital creations. Have fun, have a great day and God bless.